And there's a second problem with this whole approach is if, if consciousness arises out of matter, where do you draw the line? Which I mean, you know, human beings, we know we're conscious. We assume dogs are conscious. I sometimes meet people who say, oh, I actually meet people who say human beings aren't conscious. I find them fascinating and most, <laughs> most frustrating people to have a conversation with. They say, oh, this all may be an illusion. Okay, if it's an illusion, who's experiencing the illusion? Or oh, that may be an, okay. you know. You know. <laughs> Others say, oh, animals aren't conscious. And my retort is, well, if, you, if your dog had to go for an operation, would you ask the vet to give it an anesthetic? And they say, well, of course. It's like, well, if you don't believe it's conscious, why would you want to make it unconscious? You know, clearly, we imagine a dog would feel pain or a cat would feel pain. So clearly, we think they're conscious, they're experiencing. Do we draw the line between dogs and fish? I mean, fish have similar nervous systems. We imagine they would be conscious. I mean, I think most of us have a hard time sort of catching a fish and just cutting it to bits while it was still alive to eat it. We want to, we want to make sure it's dead and unconscious before we start mutilating it. So this question, where do you draw the line? And the problem is wherever you draw the line, you come up against the same question of how does something below the line is totally unconscious? What happens above the line that becomes conscious? So some people say, you know, nervous systems are important. Jellyfish don't have nervous systems. But does that mean they're not conscious? Or is it just the nervous system allows their consciousness to take a much richer form? If, if you say a jellyfish is totally unconscious, you have to explain what it is about nerve cells that actually creates the appearance of consciousness. And no one has any idea. So where people are going is to say there is no line. Bacteria have some dim, 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 very faint hint of consciousness. And you have to then go down to matter and say, you cannot draw the line anywhere. So in that sense, consciousness is in everything. And if you take that position, then you say, well, there's no line between an atom and the quantum field that seems to be manifesting as an atom. And you have to say it goes all the way into the nothingness, into the no-thingness. The awareness has to go all the way down. It's not something that appears in evolution. It's something which was pre-existing. And that's what's called panpsychism in philosophy, which literally means mind in all. So the idea is that consciousness goes all the way down. And this is, I think, I call the meta-paradigm the paradigm behind the paradigms. The current meta-paradigm is the real world is the material world. Space, time, matter, energy are primary. Consciousness is an epiphenomenon of matter. With paradigms like um, the idea that the Earth, when the Earth was still at the center of the universe, there's an anomalies. An anomaly is something which troubles the paradigm. It's something which can't be explained. And the anomaly for the current worldview is consciousness itself. Consciousness, it, we cannot doubt it. There's absolutely no doubting that we are conscious. It's the only thing we're absolutely sure of. And there's no way of explaining it. And the fundamental assumption that is the problem here, the unquestioned assumption of the current meta-paradigm, is that matter is insentient. So where we're going is towards a new worldview which says, and this is what people here have been speaking about, the alternative meta-paradigm is that consciousness is a fundamental quality of the cosmos as fundamental as space, time, matter, energy. But I want to go a step further. This is, this is like a halfway point, although we're nearly at the end of the talk, it's a halfway point in our understanding. It's actually more fundamental. And what I want to say, is there anything else we can say about the world out there? If consciousness goes all the way down, then we can say there is awareness there. There is awareness. So we end up with a view saying there's a dynamic, structured field of being that is aware.
And one of the problems with panpsychism is that it's still a dualistic model. It's dual aspect. It says everything in the physical world has a mental aspect. So there's two aspects. It's, it's still a dualistic model. But then we, we say everything, but is there really anything there? And this, is, again, is a fundamental assumption of modern science, that there is some, something there in some form or another. But I think we need to question that assumption. I mean, the assumption is there is some physical reality in some way or other. But if there's nothing there, no thing, and thingness is just a construct in the mind, maybe we have to let go of that fundamental assumption. And I want to bring in here Occam with his razor, which has nothing to do with shaving, although it looks like he needed one. His idea, this is way back, is among, when you have competing hypotheses, the one with the least number of assumptions is probably the right one. So if we're looking at the cosmos and say, is it, is it a dual thing, there's something called a unified field, out of which, or part of which is consciousness, has two assumptions. If everything is pointing to the fact there may be no thing there, maybe we should drop that assumption and just say the, the model that's probably the more correct one is the one that says there's only awareness there. There's only an aware field of being. A field of pure consciousness, we can call it spirit, Brahman, God. And that, we say the universe is a dynamic structured field of being observing itself and in observing itself, creating, its, creating for itself a representation of the world as a material world. In, the, in this new model, consciousness is not an epiphenomenon of matter. Matter is an epiphenomenon of consciousness. Now, just briefly, new paradigms usually have a couple of things about them. First of all, they include the existing paradigm as a model that's true. And secondly, they explain the anomaly and other problems. I just want to very briefly look at how I think this idea that the universe is only consciousness, how, how it, what the new paradigm looks like. So firstly, the laws of physics are still valid. Everything we've discovered about the world is still valid. I want to you know, put that up as a big banner. Do not worry. We're not changing anything that we've discovered. But we have to change what we think about them. We assume that they are the laws of the unfolding of the physical world of space, time, and matter, but really they're the laws of the unfolding of consciousness. And so this answers the Science Journal's top two questions. What is the universe made of? Nothing. It's not made of anything, but there is this aware field of being. What is the biological basis of consciousness? We don't need one. The consciousness is already there. Then, secondly, this may offer new approaches to understanding quantum theory, as I said at the beginning. There's no fixed material world, and consciousness is important. This is a model which satisfies those two. We don't, we don't know how it works out, but clearly it's relevant to that. Secondly, paranormal phenomena aren't prohibited anymore. Paranormal phenomena are prohibited in modern science because there's no way of explaining. If everything's consciousness, then all this stuff becomes allowable. We may not understand it, but it's allowable. And thirdly, it offers a bridge between science and spirituality. And the essence of spirituality, as we've been touching upon here, is the whole nature of I, of I am. And if it's a field of being, I am is actually the first person experience of being. Being is what is, but when we experience what is as conscious beings, it's the essence is amnes. And this is what, just a couple of, you know, Ramana Maharshi, I am is the name of God. If God is the essence of creation, the essence of creation as experienced is the self. Or Schrodinger. The physicist, what is this I? You will on close introspection, not analysis, introspection, looking at yourself, find what you really mean by I is the ground stuff upon which all experiences and memories are collected. 